Hello everybody. In this lesson today we're going to be talking about weight and balance. Performing weight and balance calculations is directly related to the safety of flight and should be a part of every pre-flight briefing. Overloading can have detrimental effects on performance such as overheating in a climb, added wear on engine parts, increased fuel consumption. Not only should the aircraft be within weight limits but also within CG limits to have an even load distribution. Any item on board the aircraft that increases the total weight is undesirable for performance. Manufacturers attempt to make an aircraft as light as possible without sacrificing strength or safety. As a pilot, we should always be aware of the consequences of overloading the aircraft. An overloaded aircraft may not be able to leave the ground, or if it does become airborne, it may exhibit unexpected and unusually poor flight characteristics. If not properly loaded, the initial indication of poor performance usually takes place during takeoff. Excessive weight reduces the flight performance in almost every respect. For example, some of the most important deficiencies of an overloaded aircraft are a higher takeoff speed, a longer takeoff run, reduced rate and angle of climb, a lower maximum altitude, shorter range, reduced cruising speed, reduced maneuverability, higher stalling speed, higher approach and landing speed, longer landing roll, and excessive forces and weights placed on the nose wheel or tail wheel. Here in this video clip is an example of an airplane that is presumably pretty heavy and you can see the effects of the weight on the aircraft on its really long takeoff roll. The aircraft struggles to get in the air and uses practically every inch of the runway to do so. This is a prime example of an overweight condition leading to a higher takeoff run and a higher takeoff speed needed. Now there are two aspects to weight and balance, weight and balance. Balance refers to the location of the CG of an aircraft, the center of gravity, and it's important to stability and safety in flight. The CG is a point at which the aircraft would balance if it were suspended at that point. Kind of like a fulcrum or the center of a teeter-totter on a kid's playground. The primary concern in balancing an aircraft is the fore and aft location of the CG along the longitudinal axis. The CG is not necessarily a fixed point. Its location depends on the distribution of weight in the aircraft. As variable load items are shifted or expended, there is a resultant shift in CG location. As pilots, we should be familiar with terms used in working problems related to weight and balance. The first term is going to be standard empty weight. That's the weight of the airframe, engines, and all the items with fixed locations, and it includes unusable fuel and operating liquids such as oil. The basic empty weight. The standard empty weight plus the weight of optional and special equipment. The center of gravity, or CG. The point about which an aircraft would balance if it were possible to suspend it at that point. This is also the point in the aircraft through which all forces act. Station, a location along the airplane fuselage usually given in terms of distance from the reference datum. Datum, an imaginary vertical plane or line from which all measurements of arm are taken. Arm, the horizontal distance in inches from the reference datum line. Moment, a force that tries or causes an object to rotate. It's a product of weight of an item multiplied by its arm. We get our moment by multiplying our weight in pounds times our arm in inches, and that gives us a moment equivalent to inch pounds and our standard weights. Gasoline at six pounds a gallon, jet A, 6.8 pounds a gallon, oil, 7.5 pounds a gallon, and water at 8.35 pounds a gallon. Just like we discussed the adverse effects of weight, we need to discuss the adverse effects of balance, or the location of the center of gravity. We can either be too far aft or too far forward. Let's start with an aft CG. An aft CG is going to lower the stalling speed. This is due to the fact that less tail down force is required to maintain altitude. This means a lower angle of attack and lower drag, which means a slower stall speed an FCG is going to be less stable. An FCG is going to result in a faster cruising speed. 
A lower angle of attack and less drag means faster cruising speed. A forward CG will result in a higher stall speed. This is due to the fact that the nose up trim that we use requires a greater downforce on the tail. This also means a higher angle of attack and more drag. This is a more stable condition and it will have a lower cruise speed. A higher angle of attack and more drag will produce a lower cruise speed. We may not be able to flare enough whenever we come in for our approach to landing if the CG is too far forward. Okay, so we're gonna go through a simple example of a weight and balance calculation. Now, I made these numbers up for simplicity, but the concept is still the same. So first off, say we have our aircraft and we're gonna start with a datum, so that will be zero, and then we'll reference every other measurement to the right of the datum in a measure of inches. Say we're gonna have uh, one pilot, a middle passenger, a rear passenger, and baggage in the baggage compartment. Say our first pilot, or our pilot, weighs 50 pounds and is located 10 inches from the datum. So that is our station one, is the pilot station. He weighs 50 pounds and is 10 inches from the reference datum. Our middle passenger, we're gonna say she weighs 60 pounds and is located 15 inches from the reference datum. Our rear passenger, we're going to say he weighs 70 pounds and is located at a station 20 inches from the reference datum. And then finally, our baggage compartment is going to contain 10 pounds worth of baggage and is located at the station 25 inches from the reference datum. Now with that information, we need to go back in and compute our moments. Well, as we know, the moment is gonna be equal to the arm times the weight. So our pilot here, our moment is gonna be our arm, 10 inches, times his weight of 50 pounds. That's going to give us a moment of 500 inch pounds, and so on and so forth for our other passengers. Our passenger one will have a moment of 900 inch pounds, Passenger two will have a moment of 1,400 inch-pounds, and our baggage compartment will have a moment of 250 inch-pounds. Now, the farther the station is away from the datum, the greater its moment will be, which is why you can see there's only a 10-pound baggage, or 10 pounds worth of baggage in the baggage compartment. And we'll have a total moment of 3,050 inch-pounds. Now the purpose of this is to find the location of our center of gravity. And in order to do this, we need to divide our total moments by the total weight. So we are going to say that our total weight, aircraft and passengers, is 254 pounds. So our center of gravity will be our total moment of 3,050 inch pounds divided by 254 pounds. And that comes out to a center of gravity of 12 inches. So that center of gravity will be located 12 inches from the reference datum. So once we have this information, how do we know if we are within limits? Well, we have different um, charts and graphs to be able to calculate this. As you can see here, we have what's called a center of gravity moment envelope chart. And it's a graph showing the CG moment limits for various gross weights. Acceptable limits are established as an area on the graph. The area is called the envelope. Weight is on the vertical axis and moments on the horizontal axis. So we would take our CG of 12 inches and trace it across the bottom of the graph to 12 inches. And then we would trace up to our total weight of 254 pounds. And we would be able to look at the envelope and tell if we are within limits or not. And as you can see, we are within the CG envelope and also within the weight envelope. And this completes our brief lesson over weight and balance. Thanks for watching.